guys, welcome back to Sassy Dem's YouTube channel. I don't know why I sound like that. Hi guys, welcome back to Sassy Dem's YouTube channel. <sighs> How are you? How's everyone doing? How are you feeling? Please ignore the largeness of my eyebrows. It's been exactly five weeks since I've gotten um, a thread and I um, didn't quite, I don't know, when I was doing my makeup, <laughs> I was like, oh, they look really messy. I'll just fill them in a bit. What are these? A bit, Satama. I've got massive slugs on my face. Anyway, bushy eyebrows are in, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, welcome to the third instalment of You Wanna Work In TV. Basically, this episode um, is one of three. We have spoken about the pros and cons of going to uni and going straight into work, and we have spoken about how to make the most of university. And now this is going to be a general chat and level of advice of how to get a job in TV and also how to mandate, mend, how to like stay in TV because a lot of people say once you're in the door, once you get a foot in the door, you're in, you're in. It's, it ain't like that still. It's harder. It's harder than that. It's much harder than that. So let's go. So you wanna work in TV? Right, okay. So. So you want to work in television, right? So you've decided you want to work in the TV industry. First thing you should know is the jobs you should be applying for. You are applying for entry level jobs. I'm expecting to be talking to young people here. So I will talk through the other roles as well. But basically, if you start from the bottom, you either start as a production assistant or a runner. Things like junior research, or you could maybe start as a junior researcher, but those jobs don't really work if you haven't got the experience. It'd be quite difficult for you, but you can get that experience. So how do you get a runner job? Well, there are some Facebook groups that are very, very helpful that, that you can get TV runner jobs in. So you can f find your way on one of those. I can add some links below. Um, sometimes you need a mutual friend to get in, but sometimes with them, you can actually just enter the group, which is great, lovely, helpful, fantastic. Um, there are also schemes, 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 schemes. I was never on a scheme, but I know quite a few people who were on schemes. And like, let me just say this, there are great ways to get in people from disadvantaged backgrounds. There are great ways to get in people um, from different ethnic backgrounds. They are fantastic and people with disabilities. They are great. They're fantastic. However, they are oversubscribed. Loads and loads and loads and loads of people are also going to be want wanting to be on schemes. That's just how it is. I could not get in a scheme to save my life, but there are great, great ones out there. There's the Shine Scheme. There's there's creative access there's also what's the other one called shine creative access and uh, i can't remember oh mama youth there are lots of great great schemes and basically when you're on a scheme um they tend to match you up with the company and put you in there so you can get like months of work experience but what they also do which i think is better than getting work experience and better than just getting in a job is they also give you like education so you i think it's some of them have like weekly lectures where you meet people in the industry they team with a mentor and they will just tell you what you're supposed to know when you start in the industry because you could be going in blind like i did and no one will tell you shit you'll be learning more from people who've been working for two weeks at a job than you'll learn from people who've been working five years at a job for some reason they just don't think they need to give you advice lady who called me an intern every single day but never ever taught me anything thank you very much for that no shade um but shade <laughs> but literally that's the reason schemes are good so please do always apply for them they're always handy and you can get on one good for you um another way in is to go to events there are lots not that many but there are quite a few for, um, events that you can attend that ha give you the opportunity to network and meet people within your industry you can meet talent managers you can meet execs you can meet someone who willing to mentor and you should approach those people when you go to these events and say i want to work in the industry can you help me get a job don't beat around the bush don't ask for advice don't ask for their number that's what you need to do and if you're lucky you'll be asked for a chat now a chat by the way is a job interview they were like, oh, maybe I'll meet you for coffee or oh, do you want to come in for a chat? It's not a chat, it's a job interview. It's, they will be asking you questions about why you want to work there and why they should hire you and why you're impressive and if you really want to do this. That's what they do and they cover it with the word chat and it's all like kind of fun and games. It's all great, it's all wild and exciting, but it's quite, quite scary. So <laughs> that's... That's um, one way. So I uh, went in all through C&D Careers Day, which was an open day. But there's also RTS Careers Day and there are lots of other ones. I would suggest getting yourself a talent manager account um, and also Facebook groups and follow anything you can do. So follow um, RTS, follow Creative Access, follow C&D. And they have these 
events that literally invite people into a room to help people get into the industry. So be part of it. Look for these things. I will list them below in the comments. And while you're down there, you might as well like this video. Oh? Oh? Did that work? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, another great way to kind of get into the industry, if you have tried the events and you've tried schemes and everything is to email so i've said this before if you want work experience if you want to get a job you need to email the right people and i think it's really hard to know what different companies are if you're not there's honestly don't let anyone ever say to you like oh do you not know any company i well now there are companies i've never heard of or like i'll watch a show and i'll not know what company it is it's okay to not know everything about the industry because you're not in the industry yet it's not even interesting if you're not part of the industry do you know what i mean uh, so I don't let anyone like try and make you feel like a dickhead but <laughs> what you should do is literally watch tv watch what you like to watch but then think about what you'd like to make as well because I think there is a difference I think my personality and what I watch which is a lot I could work on any kind of show essentially you could pop me anywhere and I'd probably understand the show, how it works, blah, blah, blah. But I found really early, really early on that there are different kinds of shows and different kinds of people enjoy working on those different shows and the hours are different and the way you do it is different, you know. So I think, really think quite, I think it's better to think about it early than think about it later. Because what happens is it's very easy to get pigeonholed in, so for example, entertainment shows, normally the teams are a lot bigger um normally it involves a lot of casting um normally it actually involves quite a lot of like long hours and they're normally filmed in times like summer and things like that so it's just you kind of have to be aware of that that's what your life's going to be it's going to be being part of a massive team churning out things you know and if you want to do that and you enjoy that and you're passionate about that and you want to make things that are shiny and happy and great on tv do that of course that's what you want to do However, I've always found that really difficult. I don't, how do I say this person like a little small bitch, but I don't want to waste my time making something that I don't think is like important. Not to say it's not entertaining, not to say I don't watch it, not to say I don't respect it. It's not what I said, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like, certain shows make money in it. I make shows that don't make money. I make shows that, you know, expand your brain essentially um so if you're working on a documentary for example you probably be working on a smaller team you probably work longer hours but you feel i always feel like i feel okay about when i have to work long hours for the most part because it's like oh okay well at least like someone will learn something after this or like the reason i'm working long hours is good not just because i have to give my you know series producer 20 options and they're gonna pick five like do you know what I mean? It's not about churning. It's about finding those good stories. And sometimes you've got to do the legwork to do that. So it's a very different world. So you kind of have to decide what you want to do. And it's quite hard to do that from the outside. But when you're quite junior, that's when you need to explore that and realise that those worlds are different. And if your CV is full of stuff, by the time you're a senior researcher, so a couple of years in, you might be stuck in that world and you never really cross over. Um, so think about it um <laughs> also you should understand there's editorial and production editorial that's a runner and there's also a production assistant or a production runner so you would be helping the production team the production team although it sounds like they do what they do is organize everything that the editorial team do so that is schedules locations everything we can't do anything without production but i don't want to be in production <laughs> like you literally cannot do anything without production but you have to be really on top of things you have to be quite good at like just organizing things accounting people and asking people things and keeping people accountable so if that's something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable in your junior position probably not for you because at the end of the day you're going to have to go up to like the producer and be like hi could you send me your schedule hi could you do that you ask the things a lot and it's a really daunting thing where like kind of in the tour, you just do. You kind of just get your directions so you can just do it. You might ask for like, oh, could you do this for me? But it's not as demanding as being like, hi, can you send me the receipt for the dinner that you guys had? Because it seems like you spent over, like it's a very different world. Um, <laughs> and you should also be aware that they're two different worlds. So if you want to do that side of things, know you want to do that side of things. If you want to do editorial, know that. If you know you want to one day be a director or producer, that's decide you to go on if you know that you one day want to run a company and like make sure if you want to be more in the business of tv 
that's the side she would go on and those are the entry levels you go on and it's hard as i said once you start to rise in each in all of those ranks it becomes more difficult and just a uh, side note which i think this is quite obvious i'm talking about factual tv i don't work in scripted i can't tell you anything about getting in scripted because i tried and i'm not there so <laughs> here we are so yes so now once you're in if you're lucky enough so maybe you've got an internship let's say for example or maybe you're an office runner or whatever it is so understand that for the most part you're a freelancer now i say this but not everyone is some people are office runners for like a year two years my advice to you would be don't stay anywhere too long I don't think you need to be an office runner for more than nine, ten months. You don't need to be somewhere for more than a year at all because you ended up you end up moving up extremely slowly. And you know what? You know what that does? That keeps your money low. You don't want to keep your money low. You want to make bank. I <laughs> my first job that I was offered after my internship gave me two hundred and fifty pounds more a week than my internship. I was like, what? I could not believe it so much so that i didn't even i was offered that and i well i ended up it didn't happen in it but i was offered that and i basically it didn't happen because that happens sometimes as well that's a video for another day and i um but i ended up just like ra raising it by like 100 pounds so i was like oh, who needs 200 extra pounds a week blah, blah blah but like you need to be able to like expand your experiences and go out of companies and like I don't know some companies like say yeah you get to be a runner on that show and it's great it's great it's great but it's like remember you can expand yourself and do other things and actually see the industry properly don't get like trapped in that world i remember like being an intern and just being extremely comfortable but it's like you have the opportunity to do so many more things you might be in a great company that is great for getting people in the industry but they're not great at like letting you grow and giving you money and at the end of the day, guys, we're talking about jobs here. And jobs are there to pay your bills. You know? You know? So I would always try and make those connections. You're working with other freelancers. So remember to, like, communicate with people. Ask them what they've done before. Ask them what they're going to be doing. Do this in the... Do, don't do this, like, don't be annoying. Don't do what they're doing work. Do when you're in the... Meet people up in the cafe. Walk to Tesco's with them. Have a chat. Get to know them. Because at the end of the day, those are the people who are going to get you jobs. Um, and also, I would say, don't forget that you're going to be out in the jungle again. So you need to be, like, recording contacts. So when you should say to someone, oh, can I send you my CV? That's an okay question to ask. This communication is so important in our industry. We have said time and time again, it runs on nepotism. So if you are the little girl, you are the, I don't know why I said little girl, but if you're the young person who came up and was like, oh, I'm really interested in what you do, I, I, or I, I Googled you, I've seen your CV, or I heard you did this as well, or you asked them what they've done before. You're like, I really like that. Can I pass you my CV? And if you ever do anything like that again, could you get me on that? People will call you. And... I think that's also an important meaning, meeting people. When you are in jobs or when you're finishing jobs or when you're unemployed in the early days, use that time to meet as many people as possible. Go for those chats. You might be like, oh my God, I went all the way in central London. I have no money, so I have to walk home. <laughs> I didn't walk home, but you know what I mean? Like I felt it on the empty pockets. But I think it's really, really important to meet all those people. I'm still getting phone calls from people I met in 2016, 17, honestly. Like... And I just met them. They might have just remembered your shirt, but they call you, um, if you get what I mean. So, yes, I hope I'm giving okay advice here. But basically, there are lots of ways to get into this industry, but it's hard to stay in. Um, I know a few people have quit. I know a few people have bounced in, bounced out. I know a few people who want to quit. Um, but it's too late. <laughs> But I think it's really important to have any sort of clarity. If you have any questions ever, don't be afraid. As I said, ask Sassy Jam. We are completely right here to help. Send in any advice. It's absolutely cool. No problems. Like, actually, genuinely, no problems. Um, I hope you have appreciated our advice. Listen to our advice. If I spoke too fast, let me know. But there are lots of opportunities. Read things below. I will list some of the schemes and open days that you can go to. And also a couple of Facebook groups that are helpful to join. And yeah, you never know.
your job, your career in television could be around the corner. Um, make sure you read Jen's job. Oh my God, why don't my name is definitely Jen. I was, I was like, ha Make sure you read Jen's blog, which has great, some great advice in there and links as well. And yeah, keep it sassy. See you in two weeks. Peace out, peace out, down. Ah! <laughs>